Today, I'm felt painting. Some assembly required. So now that I know I definitely prefer felting onto wool, I'm going to use this old sweater to do some two-dimensional felt painting. This guy passed the point of no repairs a while ago and kindly sacrificed itself to my craft stash. I was originally planning to felt a cardinal onto that gray material from all of the slow stitching videos, but we saw how that came out in the last video. Looking at my shrunken sweater collection, this one jumped out, and instead of cardinal, this one was totally shouting flamingo at me. That might be weird. I accept that. <laughs> Let's get felting. I thought it would be neater if I tried to stretch the sweater over an embroidery hoop, so I'll make sure that I cut it bigger so I have some space. I also thought it would be interesting to use the ribbing and make it part of the painting. I think it could be the water, maybe, that the flamingo is standing in. I think if you're using a sweater as your backing material, maybe it's cool if you can tell. So apparently the sweater is pretty thick, so I had to open the hoop way up and it still kept popping off. Luckily, it eventually decided to stay where I put it. If I were painting with paint, I would definitely want to do a sketch first so that I can see where everything goes, where I should put like the body and the head and how it should curve. I don't see why you can't do the same thing with wool. I'll use a medium pink to put down the basic shapes and angles and all that. I'm not worried about color yet. I didn't felt it in very firmly, just kind of tacked it down so that I could peel off any mistakes and redo them, but it looks pretty flamingo shaped. I'm kind of surprised. That turned out better than anticipated. I thought it might be handy to have a wide range of pinks available, so in addition to my normal bag of pink, I busted out these little guys that you may recognize from every Amazon fiber listing. I also have a little block of foam that I can put behind the sweater on top of my normal foam to give a little support under each area as I go. I think it felt a little bit better with foam right underneath. And there's a little gap if I just put it on top of my big foam block. First, let me felt my sketch pink down just a little bit better so it's not such a fluffy base. I think I will start with the shadows and work up from there. A maroon would be a pretty good medium dark. I'll do the legs too. Hmm. Need some deeper shadows. I'll try a darker maroon for some really dark bits. Hmm, not bad. You can start to see how the dark kind of rounds him out a little bit. Obviously, it looks a little funny because I've only done the shadows and everything else is flat. Let's see what we can do with the body. I'm going to use a little more of this medium pink to start filling the body to make a better base. I don't want any green showing through, and this pink should smooth the transition from the dark. Ooh, that's already looking better. I'll fatten up his neck and head a little bit too. It also lightens up any areas that got a little too shadowy in the last step. Great! Now I can start to add some light colors to the body and see if I can make him look a little bit rounder and feathery. For this part, I'm starting out with a light pink, but not the lightest, and adding it almost in lines along his back. This helps him look round as well as feathery. Now I'm adding soft stripes of a few other shades, like a brighter pink and a coral, to blend and add more variation. I'll highlight his back with a really light pink and add some bright pink in his tail and neck. Hey, that's not bad for now. I'll move my foam block up to his head and work on that for a little while. 
It's a little weird when there's only detail in one little spot. Wow, a little brighter pink up his neck and into his head actually makes a big difference. It already starts looking more 3D. It's like magic. Now let's fix that beak, Mr. Flamingo. I always get flamingo beaks confused. They're sort of white at the top and pink underneath, and then suddenly black around the corner. A skinny bit of black here lets him open his mouth, and then a teensy-weensy nostril. Well, that is easily the best flamingo beak I have ever done, ever. So to me, flamingo eyes are a really creepy reddish orangish color, but somehow we still like them. <laughs> and a little more black in there for his beady little pupil. There, not bad, looking flamingo-y. <laughs> now this part around his wing is looking a little funky. Let's see if it can be helped. I think it needs to be covered with more feathers so it's not so abruptly dark, like all of a sudden. So I'm just using teeny strips of light pink to add some fluffy blending. I don't think the legs are too bad, but they could maybe use a little highlight to make the front one pop forward a little bit. I'll just use the teensiest little line of lightish pink to highlight this leg. Not too much, because flamingo legs seem to be pretty dark. That looks better. So he's almost finished, but I think the water needs a little definition. I'll move my little foam piece down to his feet and add just some suggestion of water. I looked through my teeny colors and picked some that might match. I want the water to be pretty similar to the sweater color. I'll probably just use those two lighter ones, but it never hurts to be prepared. I'm putting down a line straight across a teeny bit above the ribbing. Ooh, I'll put a little maroon in for reflection. I'll add just a little more of the same greenish color, like ripples. When it crosses over the maroon, it makes it look more like a reflection and not like weird bendy long legs. I also put a teeny bit of the lighter greenish color to highlight some of the ripples. And I went over it all just to make sure it's well attached. Ta-da! It actually looks like a flamingo! That is so exciting! I don't mean to sound so surprised, but this looks much better than I actually thought that it would. Yay! Usually my everything ends up looking really cartoony, but this looks almost like a real actual flamingo. Almost. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I love him just the way he is. I usually make my own felt sheets just out of wool roving when I want to felt something flat like a painting. And that's nice because I can pick the colors and maybe even add a gradient or something before I start felting any details. But I think I'll keep sweaters in the rotation too. It's certainly quicker for one thing. But I like the idea of using the patterns and textures in the sweater as like part of the painting, if you will. What do you think? Should I try some more with sweaters? Leave me a comment. Do you have any extra ideas? I can always use ideas, I like ideas. Now in the back of this, it is not super attractive. I just took some thread that you can't see. It's purple, why can't you see it? <laughs> I just took some thread and pleated the back a little bit so it would lie flat and just tied it quickly. I'm not sure that this is a permanent arrangement, so I didn't want to cut it or anything, but this will keep it until I decide where it's gonna go. This, this may be it. But that was really fun. I'm so proud of this. This is shocking and surprising and adorable. If you enjoyed this video as much as I did, or even not as much as I did, because I liked it a lot, that's a high bar, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of video and you're not subscribed yet, you can do that right underneath the video and click that all notifications bell so you don't miss anything. New videos come out on Tuesdays and Saturdays, so stay tuned and until the next video, be awesome and I will see you then. Bye!